just after 2 a.m. Japan time on September 11th. The H-2B rocket uh, that will launch this maiden flight of the new cargo-carrying HTV, as it is known, is uh, set uh, for its final uh, checkout and a final readiness review down in Tanegashima in uh, the tip of southern Japan at the uh, Space Center that will be used by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, to launch uh, the HTV on its maiden flight. Unlike the European automated transfer vehicle that uh, automatically docked to the aft end of the Russian segment of the International Space Station a year and a half ago, the uh, ATV uh, operating on autonomous uh, docking capability, the HTV is unique in its own right since it has to be plucked out of orbit by the station's robotic arm, the Canadarm2. Earlier today here at the Johnson Space Center, we held a pre-flight briefing uh, to outline uh, all of the particulars regarding the maiden flight of the H-2 transfer vehicle. The lead International Space Station flight director for the maiden flight of the HTV, Dana Weigel, outlined uh, the whole scenario between launch and the grapple and berthing that the crew on board the International Space Station will be rehearsing a short time from now. The H-2V is launched on an H-2B rocket from Tanegashima, Japan. Launch is scheduled for September 10th, 12.01 Central Time, September 11th, 2.01 Japan Time. This will be the first flight of the H-2B rocket. There's a flight control team at the launch site in Tanegashima that's responsible for monitoring the rocket performance. The HTV flight control team in Scuba, Japan will take over after final separation of HTV from the rocket about 15 minutes into its flight. Two minutes and four seconds into the flight, two of the four solid rocket boosters will separate. Three seconds later, the other two separate. Three minutes and 40 seconds into the flight, the fairing that protects HTV during launch will separate and fall away. Five minutes and 54 seconds into the flight, the first stage will separate. At this point, HTV will have reached an altitude of 287 kilometers. 15 minutes and 11 seconds into the flight, the second stage, which is the final stage of the rocket, will separate. At this point, HTV is flying with its own propulsion system and communications will be established with the ground teams. On flight day one after launch, the flight control team will do a series of activation and checkouts with the vehicle. Seven hours into flight, it'll begin its initial phasing to the International Space Station. On flight day two, it'll continue its far field rendezvous, and the teams will do an extensive checkout of its absolute and differential GPS system. Flight day three has a number of demonstrations. These are all uh, kind of tests and checkouts of safety critical and key features that we need for further uh, on in the mission. The demonstrations we'll be doing are two active aborts, we also call these collision avoidance maneuvers or CAMs, two passive aborts, and then check out of their backup computer, which is the abort computer unit or ACU. Flight days four and five on board, the crew will finish, finish up their final onboard proficiency training. On flight day six, we'll have a special IMMT on the ground to review all of that demonstration and system performance data. On flight day seven, the crew will finish final onboard preparations for the capture, including setting up the robotic workstation, video, laptops. They'll route a hardware command panel that they use to control HTV. Flight day eight is the actual capture. HTV will make its final approach, and then the crew will do the capture. This next video clip that I have shows you the flight day eight activity starting from HTV's approach. The morning of flight day eight, HTV arrives behind ISS. It goes to a point about five kilometers away, and then it holds for an orbit and does a number of final system checkouts. It'll then move directly below ISS for approach along the R bar. It stops at 300 meters to perform a 180 degree yaw around maneuver, and this will position HTV for contingency abort maneuvers in case they're needed in close proximity to ISS. From there, the vehicle begins approach. It stops at 30 meters and then again at the capture point. Once it's at the capture point,
the crew will confirm that HTV is controlling in the right volume, and then they'll command HTV to free drift and bring the station arm in for the capture. The crew monitors the HTV. That was uh, the lead ISS flight director, Dana Weigel, for the uh, maiden flight of the H-2 transfer vehicle, the HTV, the Japanese cargo ship uh, that will be loaded uh, with about six tons of supplies on its maiden flight to the International Space Station, again set for launch uh, from the Tanegashima Space Center in southern Japan on September 10th U.S. time, just after 12 noon central time. NASA television coverage next Thursday of that launch uh, will get underway at 11.45 a.m. central time through orbital insertion. After that, we will segue into our entry and landing coverage for Discovery's astronauts. That will be landing day for Discovery uh, to return the STS-128 crew back to the Kennedy Space Center. We also plan live coverage on September 17th of the grapple and berthing of the uh, H-2 transfer vehicle. Uh, that will begin at 2 p.m. Central Time. The actual grapple is scheduled about 2.50 p.m. Central Time on Thursday, September 17th. To that end, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Nicole Stott, Frank DeWinna, and Bob Thirsk uh, will be uh, uh, settling in uh, at the robotics workstation aboard the International Space Station in the Destiny Laboratory to run a computer program and basically rehearse the uh, what is known as the track and capture of the H-2 transfer vehicle uh, in the uh, procedures that you just saw uh, outlined uh, by Dana Weigel from today's pre-flight briefing. The HTV is uh, scheduled to remain uh, berthed uh, to the uh, Nader port or the Earth-facing port of the Harmony connecting node, the same port that you're looking at uh, where the uh, Leonardo multipurpose logistics module is berthed on the uh, upper left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, that is exactly the same uh, berthing location for the HTV, which will remain uh, uh, mated uh, to uh, the Earth-facing port of Harmony until November 1st, when it will once again be grappled, unberthed, and then cast aside uh, to uh, deorbit about three days later and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean.